Uh, this is a scene from campus, of course, across the river. Uh, and uh, we might talk about crop producers are sort of like this. They, they really are pretty well hammered uh, now here in our region in the United States with some pretty big losses this year, uh, financial losses. And uh, down here, these are milk producers, dairies, and pork producers. Uh, so they're just kind of out of it altogether, and we probably should go check to see if there's a pulse there at all. So uh, I just uh, had a, did an interview with uh, Business Week on our largest uh, pork production operation in the United States, uh, and then had a follow-up the next day with Wells Fargo, <coughs> one of their um, major suppliers of debt, uh, and they're all asking how long is this going to last, or is this major, major corporation going to make it through? So we've really had some big influences in agriculture. You know, uh, the world recession, U.S. and world recession is very important to us. So when are we going to find the bottom? When are we going to pull out? We've talked about the depressed animal sector. Uh, that's a result of loss of demand out in the world, less incomes out in the world. Those uh, uh, lower incomes resulted in less purchases of goods, agricultural goods from the United States prime beef, we saw prime beef selling virtually at the same price as choice beef. The demand for high-end restaurants selling prime beef and in our uh, exclusive kind of high-quality meat cases at grocery stores, our consumers just would pay hardly any premium. In fact, the Walmarts and other major retailers got into prime beef because they could be offering it almost at the same price as their traditional choice beef. That really has a big influence on uh, values of the animal products. In the cropping sector, we've had a return to relatively large crops in the world, big supply, and uh, we have a uh, very high cost of production. So if you'll think about uh, on the cropping side what's happened over, say, the last about three years now, think about oil. Think about the price of oil uh, over the last three years. <clears throat> we really saw our agricultural commodity prices, corn, soybeans, wheat, take off in late 06, and they just kept going. They basically paralleled oil in terms of uh, virtually percentage rate increases. So what that meant was that, uh, that profitability, revenues going up quickly with cost lagging, they had very good profits 07, 08. But what happened after June of 08, you know what happened to the oil prices? Same thing happened to our agricultural commodity prices. Those revenues went down as costs were still climbing on into the tail end of 2008. So now we got a situation, uh, tail end of 08, coming into this year, 09, where costs are just simply higher than the revenues. So what 2010 looks like to us is the beginning of recovery that we'll uh, talk about here uh, and trying to get back a little better balance uh, towards a break-even situation. This is some data from the International Monetary Fund. It's a little bit earlier in this year, and again, uh, we'll uh, be anxious as they update this. But if you'll look at that high mark, uh, about a third of the way into the graph, $61 trillion of world economic activity. In 2008, what's a recession? When economic activity declines to $55 trillion. As we look at uh, 2000, that's this year, 09. Uh, these are their numbers. Uh, do we get back to where we were in 10? No, at 56. Do we get there in 11? No, it's actually 2012 before we get all the way back. And we think that's a little bit modest that maybe the world economy will do better than this, but that's the way to think about recession. Recession is the decline in activity. Recovery uh, sounds awful positive. It is very positive, but the question is how quick is that recovery going to be? And we're generally looking at a U-shaped, uh, a fairly uh, slow uh, and a little bit longer period for this world to get back uh, in its uh, economic activity uh, that we had in 2008. Uh, another point I just want to make out of this, we've got some countries of the world. The U.S. is over here on the left side. The world's in about the middle. Developing economies in terms of 2010 economic growth over on the right-hand side. Bigger bar, higher income, income and economic growth potential. So what this tells us, uh, again, this is from International Monetary Fund. The world economy is going to grow and recover more quickly in general than the U.S. economy. And what we think that means is the U.S. dollar is going to continue to weaken. Starting over here in 2002 at the high, 
big, long decrease up to uh, June of 2008. Now, a weak, a weak dollar relates to uh, when we have to go buy things in the world market like oil, we have to pay a lot for that in our dollars because our dollars aren't worth very much. Now, for agriculture, oil and corn and oil and soybeans are generally going to be correlated. A weak dollar is uh, generally good for agriculture. You can see uh, from June 08 <coughs> to March of this year, the dollar strengthened. Well, the dollar didn't stre strengthen because of great economics in the U.S. or great budget situation for the federal government. It strengthened because of fear. So it was the flight to quality. Get the U.S. dollar last fall a year ago at this time because these other currencies just don't have the strength of the U.S. government. Get to treasuries, whatever that is. And you can see as the world has taken on a more appetite for risk uh, since March of this year, the dollar over there on the very right-hand side has continued to weaken, and it's not far away from what gave us one of the factors that gave us $150 oil. So what you have felt, what we felt here in this last month or so, is inflationary hedging is beginning to come back into the commodity markets. There is this anticipation that as the world economy picks up, the Chinas, the Indias, the demand for uh, oil is very important as those economies grow, the demand for metals, et cetera, and this will bring commodities back. So we really sense that we have bottomed, that we are turned back to the upside, and I think commodities will be one of the first things to show uh, the recovery start to show up. <clears throat> we had some big problems this year with the crop. Uh, very late planted, extremely wet spring. We had a very cool summer, and while it was pleasant for you and I, the crop progress was very slow. Late planted, slow progress, so maturity is delayed and now we've had not so much here in Indiana, but further west snow, and this wet fall is starting to result in some quality problems also. So uh, our progress on, on harvest, very slow, lots of concern about getting these crops out and maintaining quality. Uh, here's sort of the picture on the crop side. As we go back a few years, uh, start on corn for the 2007 crop. Uh, remember, corn prices in 2005 were a little bit over $2 a bushel. So 2005 into 6 and 7, by 2007, Indiana prices here on corn about 4 and a quarter a bushel, and the cost were lagging coming up about $3. So big profitability from that 07 crop, $1.25 a bushel. The 08 crop, again, we had the high prices of the commodities, but you can see the cost coming up to $3.75.